Forgebox module of the week, Hyper 7. So Eric is a stickler for um, the Simver. So there's been a, a couple of breaking changes. Even though they're a minor, they're still considered breaking changes. So he's up to 7.1 now. I think he was last year at this time, it was 3.6. So it's definitely not a, every year we release a major version. If he breaks something, it's a major version. So... Um, yeah, major major version bumps in an Eric Peterson library doesn't mean there's major changes. It just means there's a breaking change. <laughs> yep. No matter how small, if it breaks something, major version bump. Yep. Uh, which means you're always safe to update minor versions. May or may not be safe to update a major version. Yep, for sure. And there was a blog post there. Um, and so in the blog post, you talked about like six or seven major features. You want to give us a quick rundown of what they are? Um, if I can open the blog post. I here, highlighted the hyper, it. Hyper updates right here. The right above you, the the little uh, bullet points. Oh, you put them in the show notes. Sorry, Just trying to make it easy. Uh, for yeah, you. so there's a new documentation site uh, for Hyper. He has an a as XML uh, method, which I think is the same as the as JSON, except for it's XML, but a JSON that's kind of handy. Um, head and options shortcut methods. He has some more accurate status codes. I don't know what that means, but it sounds interesting. Um, easier uh, custom Hyper clients. And the ability to fake requests. I bet that's useful for uh, unit testing. Yeah, for sure. I'll just show the blog post real quick for those who are watching. But yeah, the the more accurate status codes was, I guess you got a, 402, a 502 bad gateway versus a 408 request timeout response. Previously, they're all 504s. So they're trying to get a more accurate response from the underlying Cold Fusion engine. Um, but that's yeah. weird. So 504 I mean, is for invalid I would think host. he was just returning the status code that came back from the HTTP request, and that's it. Yeah. So is he I, translating I, it or something? I don't know. I mean, basically, the 504 is usually for invalid hosts. Um, well, sorry. 502 bad gateway is returned instead of the 504 gateway timeout for invalid hosts. The 408 request timeout is if it takes too long. The 504 is basically if it's not one of those. So... Anyway, it's uh, it's really Weird. cool. I do like the fact that you have this stuff here, um, you know, the faking and everything else. And I know that Eric's been doing a lot of work with AWS, and so that's probably why he's got the XML stuff, because, you know, depending on what you're doing, sometimes you got to drop down to that, or if you're using a JDK, you have to mess with Java sometimes. So anyway, but yeah, lots of cool stuff in Hyper. It makes your life easier. It's a fluent builder experience for HTTP requests and responses. And it makes, you know, it basically wraps up the CF HTTP and gives you a bunch of helpful helpers on top of it. Helpful helpers instead of those unhelpful helpers. <laughs> but yeah, so Hyper is pretty cool. And again, if you're working with APIs, it's great because you can lock in, you know, keys, you can lock in, uh, you know, base URLs, and then you just need to make a small change when you're calling it. And the Hyper, custom Hyper builders are great for that. You just say, this is what I need to communicate with this API. And then your call just needs a little bit of the url on the end and any params you're posting but all the keys and everything are already sort of locked in that wire box mapping for you so right yeah hyper is what cfhtp would be if it was a nice fluent dsl with all the helpers you want it is really great whenever we're writing an sdk that wraps around an api and you want to be able to make you know api calls that are all have the same sort of like authentication tokens every time the same headers but they just change out the url they're hitting Hyper makes it really easy to sort of build these like reusable requests um, that just get rid of a lot of the boilerplate. We use it a lot internally. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, for those who use a lot of JavaScript stuff, it's a lot like Axios. You know, you can do a lot of the same things as you can with Axios. So it's very cool. Yep. Definitely worth checking out. Highly recommend it. That was our Forgebox module of the week, brought to you by Modernize or Die podcast, CFML News Edition, proudly sponsored by Order Solutions. You can see the new episodes every week on cfmlnews.modernizeordie.io or on the Order Solutions YouTube channel. 